So just hang out while we let folks in. Okay, we've got 13 people waiting. Let's go ahead and... Okay, if you guys are on, let us know. Say hello in the Q&A box. I see some folks already, Mary and Beth and Karen and Kathy. Hello and welcome. Definitely let us know where you are. Hi, Lynn from Newark. I think I've seen you here before. Thank you for joining again. Um, if you're just joining, um, hello and welcome. <laughs> welcome back to Meet the Miniaturist. Good to see you. Let us know where you're joining from and let us know that you can hear us. Uh, you could just type, type that in in the Q&A box. Hi, Nancy and Patty in Connecticut. Good to see you. Oh yeah, you can either use the chat box or you can use the Q&A. And just folks, so folks know, we're actually also live on Facebook, which is kind of awesome. Um, We'll just wait another few minutes because we have a few minutes before we actually begin. It's good to see everybody. Really good to see new folks are joining. Um, hi, Beth. So we are um, keeping the video and the audio for attendees um, off for, the, for these sessions, um, but we are definitely um, open to hearing your questions and comments and feedback and um, definitely use the Q&A. We are monitoring the Q&A in the chat bar for, for your communication. So definitely um, use that box. We'll just wait one more minute and they will begin. Hi, Phyllis in White Plains, my neighbor. <laughs> uh, and also, if you guys wouldn't mind, just um, let me know how you found out about this session if you are a subscriber to my email blasts, or if you found out on Facebook, uh, just give me a, a heads up on, on how you learn about these sessions, because that would be really helpful before we begin uh, and wait for a few more folks to join. Okay, with that, it's four o'clock. I'm really happy to see everybody on this Sunday. I hope everybody is well from where you are joining in from. I am very excited today to introduce our part of our Meet the Miniaturist series, uh, Ms. Sheila Schindorf from the Florida area, originally from the New Jersey area. She is a music teacher and an artist. And I discovered her obviously online, like I discovered everything else and blown away by the work she creates the um, talent she has and all the work that she puts into some of her dollhouses or all of her dollhouses. So Sheila, thank you for being here today. I'm so excited you're here. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Darren. And hello to everyone watching. Thank you for having me. And first, let me say, I am so in awe of you and the work that you're doing, putting together miniaturists and their hobby and our passions all meeting up here at your place. Well, thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you for providing beautiful work that we get to share with everybody. We My chatted goodness. a little earlier about the whole, the idea behind Meet the Miniaturist is really about joining miniaturists like you to folks who are watching in an effort to encourage and inspire and engage, whether it's to become a hobbyist or an artist or a collector or what I call an everyday enthusiast. My job is to get folks engaged in this category of miniatures and it's folks like you and artists like you who create that helped me, helped me to do that. So I'm so glad you're here and you're doing this today. Well, thank you because we just don't have the reach. You know, we're, we're in the mode of creating and, yeah. and sometimes we're almost like, you know, sheltered, like, oh, we don't want to show it off too soon. But thank you, thank you for giving us this venue to do well, it. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us about your background. Tell us a little bit about what, how, what made you jump over to the mini world and do what you do. 
<laughs> right. I I don't really know. I don't know if it was uh, something that I was seeing dollhouses, but um, I had children coming to my house and families uh, for piano lessons and for their music lessons. And so I thought, wouldn't it be neat if they had something to play with? Um, so I'm going to make something for them to play with, not just uh, this or that that I could buy at the store. I'm going to make something that would be so much fun for them. And so I decided to start making a dollhouse well the first dollhouse i made for the studio and I, it, it just went overboard it was it was lighting and this and that and then finally it was like don't touch it you know don't touch that thing but then i started making more kid friendly things and and uh, and now they're they're all over the studio so so you come for a lesson you have to kind of swim past all the dollhouses <laughs> actually that is a good segue because we're going to take a look at what that actually looks like what it looks like to sort of walk through your space your home your living space and to see all of your work so you have at this point made dozens of dollhouses Very and, true. and you say you began really in an effort to encourage the kids to see your work and get them charmed and enthused right Yes, absolutely. And they were. I would just love to see the looks on their faces, Darren. They would come in, oh, it was a new thing. And and they had to touch it and they had to reach out and do. And it was a lot of fun to do that for the kids. And you also, I want to hear a little bit more about what inspired you to ever get involved in miniatures. I know we talked a little bit about the fact that you had a tin dollhouse, but there was more to that in terms of what inspired you from an early age. Yes, yes, absolutely. I don't think I was in love with my tin dollhouse. I was grateful for it. I had it. I felt like that put me in a category where the child who didn't have a, a dollhouse, I, I guess I felt um, I took it for granted. But um, uh, eventually I was living in the Middle East and a, um, a friend of mine invited me. She says, oh, let's go ahead and change the uh, Christmas decorations in my dollhouse. And I thought, what? Christmas decorations in the dollhouse? This must have been 1976 or so, maybe 77. I, I could have been 10 or 11 years old. And um, so here we walk into um, an area of her home. She opens this cabinet and it might my eyes just almost fell out of my head. It had carpeting and it had upholstery and it had curtains and handmade things and beautiful tiny items. I, I had never seen anything like it. So that was my first dollhouse and it was very inspiring because her mother had made it for her. And I thought, right. hmm, so I'm gonna rush home then and get all the cardboard and start making these little things, not knowing anything about scale. And um, also, when I was a, a little, little girl, I remember going into the doctor's office and there on the floor in the children's waiting area, there was just a very nondescript, blocky, kind of chunky dollhouse. It right. had the shape of furniture in it. And, and so <coughs> I remember that was a lot of fun. So uh, fast so forward 40 years and I thought, I'm going to make my, I'm going to make some dollhouses. <laughs> but, but your dollhouses are different in the sense that they they definitely have a beautiful artistic quality to them. And we're going to go through um, some of these creations that you have created so that we can get a look at some of, of, of your design work. And I would love to find out a little bit more about what inspires you to do this specific kind of houses. So all of your dollhouses have an architectural feel to them, correct? They come from a from a highly design designer aspect. Where does that interest come from? Where does that inspiration come from that says, okay, I, I wanna make a dollhouse and I wanna do this certain direction. Where does that yeah. come from? Right, I, I have to say that, um, um, just through people, uh, friends, family, I know notice that people have collections of things. Like uh, one family member would collect uh, this particular type of of uh, flatware or ironware, and another family member would collect um, a particular type of uh, um, doll or or collection of things. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be fun to have like collector boxes, like the Holly Hobby collector box or my my planned John Deere farmhouse. Right. We're yeah. We're gonna talk about. So so let's take a look at, this is your, this is the, um, what is the name of this piece? 
I, I don't see your You're screen right. yet, but maybe I could find your screen. Let's, uh, oh. Let's just um, survey you guys just to make sure you actually can see the screen. Am I, uh, is that coming up? Give me a heads up. I, I don't see your screen, but, oh, I do. I see okay. a tiny, I might have to remove my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so what, what, this is actually your Russian Dachau. I mean, I, had, I hope I'm saying it correctly. This is your Russian house. Yes, it's so, a Dachau, yes. Was this one of your earlier pieces? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think this was really uh, probably house number seven or eight. Seven, and that yeah. actually, I don't, yeah, I mean, you, you at this point, how many houses have you made? <laughs> right now, we, we counted 21, but there's, there could always be someone hiding. So we, we don't know. But the DACA, I, um, that one has um, spoons in it. Those are called Kokloma spoons. And they're kind of a collection. Like if you collect uh, Russian uh, things, you would collect birch box, uh, little trinket boxes, um, and those Kokloma, that pattern. So the, the pattern on the walls, uh, I copied the pattern with a, a wood burning device. So uh, on the outside of the dollhouse, it's all wood burned okay. in, that, in that Kokloma pattern. And, um, and then I thought, well, now is it St. Basil Square in, in Moscow that has all those different roofs? I thought, how could I achieve that? So I went online and I looked for um, fish aquarium. Yes, those are those are from a fish aquarium. The 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 things on the roof. There we go. Yes, they're all things that you would put inside of your fish tank. So, do you have an art background? Where did where did this <laughs> skill come from? <laughs> Well, you teach music, so you you, you clearly you have creative genes. <laughs> um, but where did the artistic skill come from? The ability to create comp composition, because these are these are works of art that clearly pull together pieces that create this composition, this landscape. Well, thanks. I I, I took art lessons as a child, but I, I didn't study arts or graphic arts or any of the um, uh, not traditional visual, not traditional yeah. art. Did you take a lot of music? You had to have taken a lot of music courses. Yeah, music all my life, right. And so, dance and ballet, you know, and stuff like that. There's creative genes. So I, I think what people really need to, to understand is everything that is in your, your creations are either found objects or hand-painted pieces that you do or decals. Talk a little bit about all the different elements that come together to, oh, to create these dollhouses. Thank you, thank you. And you know, if it weren't for Etsy and e eBay, where would we be able to find um, decals from the 1940s? You know, where would we be able to pull out things from, from decades and decades ago? So I've used a lot of Meyer cord water slide decals, which <laughs> honestly, you could, you could open those packages and go like this, and they would be dust. So just the fact that I'm bringing to life things that I, I think probably were left in grandma's drawer. Right. And then, you know, people are cleaning out their houses or selling them. And here you, you get like a, a decal from the 1940s. I, I have a Peter Hunt house. Well, he was a designer and a, a furniture painter from I think the 40s or 50s in Cape Cod. And I said, oh, I had to do a house on Peter Hunt. So I used all of the decals and tried to do hand painting of, of that. Um, let's see, some other things I've used, which I'm almost embarrassed of. Um, you know, those tiny little, um, they're religious uh, yes. uh, medals, you know? So yeah. I, I, I thought, where can my friends put all of their, <laughs> <laughs> little sacred statues. Yeah. Well, let's build a house when and I've decorated with, with all the medals on on it of the saints and stuff. <laughs> so so just you so you find objects, but and and I you know that's a good segue to here is a your dollhouse that's all made of ceramic parts, repurposed. Oh, yeah. So what comes first? Do you see the, ob like, do you decide to make a house? Like you were talking about the John Deere, which, which I, let's, let's save it, save it. We'll tell them about the, the John Deere house. 
later. <laughs> but so what comes first, the inspiration to do the house or do you find a piece of ceramic and say, I need to do a whole house based on this? Well, I have to tell you, uh, Darren, I, I took some heat for doing the, uh, uh, the blue and white tea service because that was a perfectly good tea service that that uh, teapot that you see up there i do not think that you can even find it anymore you know you have to go to a special dealer but i i found it and uh i asked my husband who's a a, a ceramic specialist oh. i said can you cut this for me and so he put it on the chop saw he put it on the wet saw and he he cut it just the way i asked him to and uh and then we got a whole set of that so where did it come from well my idea was it was sturdy a lot of dollhouses just aren't sturdy enough to hold uh ceramics i love the idea of mosaic and found items into a mosaic because it, it it's broken but it comes together to make a beautiful whole. Yes. And, uh, oh my God, yeah. that's well, beautifully said. And what I love about your work is it's obviously it's not traditional, but you know, you're using this dollhouse to hold teacups. It, like you, you built in all these whimsical elements that are not traditionally dollhouse. And that's what really this this is this is my favorite piece. And you know, I was just drawn in by the fact that you you look twice and it's something other than you think it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. Did we touch upon your theory around um, your roofs? Talk about the roof. Oh and yeah, the of the roof in your pieces. Yes, I have found that if you ha if I have an inter interesting roof, then people aren't afraid to approach it because I think there's still um, people or an element of uh, society, I might even want to just say men who don't want to walk over to a dollhouse or anything miniature because they think it's for a, a woman or something. But I, I feel that an interesting roof line and, and something interesting on the roof will call them from across the room and get them to come and take a look at it. If it's made of coins, if it's made of buttons, if it's made of jewelry, if it's made of watches or belt buckles, something And by the way, them. let me just make sure people understand all of those elements you have used to make roofs for your dollhouse. Yes. <laughs> I just want to make sure people know that there, <laughs> there are, how your houses have a complete line, use, use stamps for the entire <laughs> the entire roof. What's the roof made of on the, the blue and white service? Oh, yes, that is made. I, I think it's a, well, it's an English set. It's called Blue Roses. And um, it, the blue and white tea service, right? Yes, it's yes. just made from broken plates, but they weren't broken. They were actually cut. You actually the, had them cut. Yeah, your, yes. your husband cut them. I think I cut the plates, but he cut the, the, the um, the teapot because the teapot really required extra handling and I, I remember comments coming in through some forum saying how could you break a perfectly good well you know that's how the way it fit so yeah. you know you, you have six sides and you want to make sure that it fits on the six side and then the sides of that house are broken mosaics Thanks. they are just you know take a hammer crush that whatever it is, blue or whatever blue or white um can i ask how heavy is this piece oh yes it is 110 pounds 110 pounds <laughs> yeah. and what did you use did you use mortar how did you pull pull, pull yes. like what material did you use to keep exactly yeah. right i used um uh, a real real ceramic glue to attach the, and then we grouted it yeah. So I have I have a couple of questions. Um, the the roof the what are the round parts? Those are windows. Yes, and there is one window. Them? Yes, you can see through them. It also has a Meyer cord um, sticker on it too, uh, a, a water slide. So those Meyer cord um, they're called blue onion um, stickers or water slide stickers decals, and um, you can see through the through the yeah i think you can see through it. Can see through what, yeah. what is my accord again my accord was um kind of a home decorative company and they made these decals and you would put them on the back of like kitchen chairs or something you know you would decorate your furniture with them it's so stunning it really but is it, 
Oh, thank you. And that's those those decals are like from the 40s or 50s. So you do a fair amount of research to get to get your projects done. And so does that take you a lot of time or do you find it easy? Like how long does it take you to pull a house together? <laughs> well, I was doing four to five a year. Wow. And I think I'm back on the upswing again because just since COVID, I yeah. was able to complete three. So I think I'm I'm going to be having a show soon. Oh. We hope to have a show. Oh wow! All right, keep that in the John Deere for, for when we talk about what's next for you. Oh yeah! Wow. Okay, so that's awesome. Um, let's see. Let's talk about your Pennsylvania Dutch Alpine. Oh, I think it's one of your more colorful structures. Thank you. Talk a little you. bit about how this came about. Oh, yes. So um, a lot of shopping at Goodwill and getting little um, uh, odds and ends, um, like there's a sugar bowl attached to it. There's a, a, a vinegar. I think right on the front, the posts are uh, oil and vinegar posts. Oh, is that what they are? They're, they're cruets right oh. <laughs> yes and then on the sides of the house you you might be able to see um a sugar bowl um i in the in the chimney i have places where i can keep my pencils and um <laughs> you know i liked having this one on my desk because i always knew that i could just reach and get a pencil and i felt like it it served my purpose in many ways i was able to look at the miniatures inside but then i was also able to hide like um a paper clips or tape dispenser inside of the sugar bowls. I'm sharing the photograph now with the pencil cup. <laughs> so, <people laughs> what is the, well, let's, why don't we do this? Let's take a question from you guys who are watching. Feel free to put in a, uh, a question in the chat box or in the QA. Um, Joanne wants to know is the skeleton of the house a particular kit or did you build it from scratch? Great question. Yes, that is the kit. That's um, the Duracraft Alpine. I I have owned and built, I believe, every one of the Duracraft kits. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I sold my Markham Hill. So the Markham Hill went out the door unbuilt. And I, I just started um, purchasing the laser uh, kits and oh. I actually love them. I love them. I, now Duracraft has, I've always had this dream of taking my Duracraft collection of 20 plus and going back to uh, Oregon. Where are they from? I think they're from. Uh, so they're a U.S. company. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, they were. They've been out of business though since the 70s. So these, wow. as soon as you start building a Duracraft, number one, you're already building vintage. Wow. So, yeah, and um, but you can still find them. People are still finding them in their attics and stuff. So what are what? I, I'm personally interested. Some of the differences between, let's say, a Jurcraft and the laser cut that you're doing today, in terms of what is it made of? What is the wood material? Um, how do you like the designs? Um, uh, you know, it's it, it's like it. pretty sturdy. Jurcraft are pretty sturdy. To they hold really all are. The, the pieces. They really are. I, I love the Duracraft log cabins. I love uh, the Duracraft wood. I love the Duracraft melamine. I, I think the uh, the Alexandria was able to hold the, the blue and white tea service. So the, the wood is so heavy. Uh -huh. It's uh, probably half inch uh, the thick um, processed it, wood. Oh, so it is, it is a processed wood, like an MDF or MDF, not plywood. Right. That's and right. so, but you're loving the laser cut. I am. I'm loving the laser and cut. What are you, you loving about it? I, well, no sanding. No sanding. You, that's right, because that it, it's like cauterized at the edge. So you don't have to spend so much time sanding, less splinters. Yeah. <laughs> is it thinner wood? And is it wood or, you know? Yes, the um, you know I've opened three of them now the laser uh, dollhouse designs and as soon as you open the box you get a fragrance of a campfire because yeah. the wood has the just burn been wood. burned and it, yeah. and at, like as soon as you put in the order that's when they carved your 
your dollhouse for you. Right. So I, I've really enjoyed it. And I have three under underway now. Uh, about the DuraCraft though, DuraCraft came in three different ways. They came in the heavy MDF, the thick, um, that can hold a lot of, if you wanted to put China on it, you could put China in or on it. Um, then they also had the uh, quarter inch um, beautiful Oregonian wood that is, um, it's fabulous. After years, it's, it's brilliant, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. You can open up uh, a Duracraft like this um, St. Anne and it, it's in beautiful condition, just gorgeous. Yeah, so I, I, I love, and then um, also Duracraft did uh, log cabins a few different the size log cabins and those were brilliant pieces of just log and and they're lovely and if you um use a little bit of um mineral spirits on the logs then it brings out the uh the shape and the design of the wood and and, uh, and then you can stain it and it looks great yeah so we we obviously couldn't go through every one of your dollhouses all of your 20 plus we have you run out of you've even run out of no you can't you haven't counted them all so i wanted to just share some of some of of the other ones um this is your holly hobbit house can you yeah. talk a little bit about this is a beautiful beautiful piece where did this oh, inspiration come from the, oh, thank you. Um, well, it's Holly Hobby, and anyone who grew up in the 70s, um, you know, a, a young lady who would be growing up in the 70s or the 60s, you would have had a Holly Hobby doll. It was just a rag doll. And yeah. this dollhouse actually is built on a much bigger, um, it's on an entire cabinet. Right. This is one of the larger uh, um Duracraft models and I think it's the Victorian mansion it's really quite big so it's it's on a huge cabinet and in that cabinet I have filled it with Holly Hobby treasures oh, wow. Holly Holly Hobby was a um an entity that was owned by Hallmark and so she had a whole line of cards and books and uh, just treasures you know so every games, Milton Bradley games. So they're all stuffed into that cabinet. So are you still collecting for this piece or do you feel like there is a finite, okay, I'm done. This piece no, is I'm done. done. No. You're done. Even <laughs> no. if you come across a Holly Hobby, you're like, nope, I'm done. No, no, I'm done. That, that is it. So I, I, I put it together now move on, right? Because I, I think you have to clear your mind to yeah. move into and clear your heart. Yeah. So, you know, give it your best shot and then move on to like something new, Yeah. Um, new challenge. No, I mean, I think that's a really interesting point because I know, you know, I, I'm the same. I'm, I feel like uh, when I make something, I never feel like it's done. You know, it's never finished. And I feel like I wish I could just get over that. How do you get to that place where, okay, it's done. It's right. finished. I'm going to stop putting energy into it because I might, to your point, you want to, move on to something else. That's right, you, you just have to love it for what it is and, yeah. and think of, um, well, in your own personal life, you it seems you have a beautiful environs there and, and gorgeous, but who doesn't want a summer home? Everybody <laughs> wants to move into like a different place, right? right. <laughs> or have like a, an apartment downtown. So, yeah. so it's kind of like that mentality, like I love where I live, I yeah. love what I'm doing, but I want, I want another house. <laughs> right. And I think you have to make room for that psychically, spiritually, physically. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I like that. That's really good. That's good advice. That's really good advice. So, so we're taking a look now at some of the other houses, um, <laughs> some of your other creations, not all 20, but a lot of them. There's one with <laughs> keys all over, which is oh, lovely. Yes. There's oh, a butterfly yeah. house. There's a San Francisco, is it the San Franciscan? That is just yeah. stunning. Stunning. Yes. Stunning. This was one of my first ones. The one that just showed was the button and birds house. So oh. that one, that one did, um, I, I stopped on it. And then when I was getting it ready for a show that I started adding more things to it. And I, I think that one, it's been knocked over. My husband's accidentally kicked it. Children have played with it. So little odds and ends. So that one is one where I always go back and I make sure, is this right? Is this right. okay? So you still zhuzh a little bit here and there. 
that's right. That's awesome. That's and awesome. one of those, what that one right there, that one is the House of the 13 Colonies. So inside, again, I used, I don't know if you have an in, interior picture, but I used the Meyer cord water slide uh, decals, and they were all American colonial. Wow. So maybe everybody remembers when in the end of the 50s, early 60s, every American house had to be Americana. You know, the, the um, eagles on the work, wall and stuff. Your work tells a, tells a larger story about design and history. Um, talk a little bit about that. I mean, when you choose the decals, you choose very carefully. Um, yeah. and, and so, so talk a little bit about that process and that the importance that you that that it is on on your creations. Well, Darren, I'm laughing a little bit about this one because uh, inside of it, I I, I found a, um, a collector's group of spoons. I like to use spoons a lot, and these were all the original 13 colony spoons. Oh, so inside are all of the 13 colony spoons with these historical Paul Revere stickers and uh, old colonial American kind of uh, decals inside but it is populated by occupied china <laughs> <laughs> little porcelain things that were made in occupied china and i thought that kind of made a statement like yeah yeah here's, here's yeah, the but... american experiment but um, you know we still need other countries to supply us with we beautiful do. things that is true <laughs> Um, we we um, want to make sure we're getting to questions. So, folks, if you have any Q and A, send it on in. Um, we do have a question about: Do you mix scale? That's a good question. Talk about: Do you mix scale? I did notice some smaller scale houses, right? Yes, this has been my first year to ever do one twenty four. This uh, this is my first experience. But as far as mixing scales, I did want to say that one of my biggest inspirations was the director uh, Jonathan Krizal. He 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 worked on Portlandia for the past uh, decade, and he was also the uh, director of the Tim and Eric Awesome Show, where he would mix scales. Like you know, one of the characters who were speaking was on the, his hand, and the other character was holding them, or he was in his pocket right yeah. and i i love that kind of juxtaposition where well it would be like an interview we're having right now and yeah. i would instead of being here i would be in your pocket <laughs> so <laughs> this is such a clever um, director i really really liked Krizal's work and so that's why in some of my houses i have um like a library set up like i in my holly hobby house i have all of the the books lined up like a library you would pull out the books like that so that the scale is human scale but then it's also smaller scale too right you know i'm just noticing that you do play with scale that way and it it's not just dawning on me this question was a pure i believe this question was pure do you mix scales meaning do you work in 12 scale and do you work in half scale but but <laughs> it, it's it's blowing my mind a little bit that you do play with scale within your pieces like you had the, the cow the milk the cow milker in <laughs> I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love when you're just sort of playing with people's minds <laughs> and, and delivering the unexpected. And I think that's really a lot what, what your work does. It delivers the unexpected in an effort to delight and excite. And I think it's just, it totally, um, it, it, it does that to the viewer. And I, you know, your kids, well, the kids that are coming to, to learn from you are really lucky. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank okay, you. So, a couple of other questions. We do have a question. You mentioned you lived in the Middle East. Where and did it influence your dollhouse designs? It's a great question. Uh, oh, yes, yes, it did. As a matter of fact, that was the first place that I ever saw a dollhouse that had um, was handmade and had upholstery and, and curtains and carpeting and flooring in it. And um, yes, living in the Middle East, I, I think um you you kind of go into yourself a bit it's not, not like there's all that activity out there for kids to to play and do i was a child when i was there in formative years and growing up and um but yes i i feel that living in the middle east really did inspire me to look into what i could create yeah in my yeah. bedroom you know or what i can make by myself yeah, yeah. Thanks I have this awesome photograph up 
of your houses in the back of a truck, which I just, I just love this photograph. It just says so much. It says you're bringing excitement and delight to people. <laughs> so you've actually won accolades at, at um, state fairs. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh yes. Well, they asked me not to come back because the dollhouses are, <laughs> they're too big. They're, too, they're, you know, they're afraid to move them when they have. So at the fair, I was given a, a complete glass room and I loved that. That was very generous of them. They allowed me to go into the glass room, set up all of my houses. Whereas the other participants in the fair, they pretty much were just out in the open. Um, the Florida State Fair is is very big. It does go on for several weeks. And um, my husband and I would sit like a fly on the wall and just watch people go round and round this glass room where all these houses were. And it was it was so charming. Do for they us really to not see. want you back with your beautiful work? Come on. <laughs> or was it, they, they, I mean, that's crazy to me. <laughs> well, it's a little hard for them to uh, take responsibility to move right. any of your precious items. Right. So as long as there's the agreement in advance that these are going to be behind glass, then we can we can do it. But well, so you, I got did have, see, yeah. you got to see everybody's reaction, so that's kind of nice. It was it yeah. was so amazing, Darren. Great. So we have a couple of other questions, um, and we're going to get to what's in the future for you. Um, but we do have a question about what your dream project is. Oh, wow. What would be my dream project? Well, my dream project is this, Darren. We, we started to amass this collection of dollhouses, thinking that we would use them in the music studio somehow so that the children would be performing their work inside of the dollhouse. And let me explain. So monthly... I have recitals for my students and they're always a theme, you know, it's gotta be this or space or colors or Halloween or Christmas or, or whatever. So always a theme. And the kids are particularly drawn to what different houses, some like this one, some like that one, some of them, it's not their cup of tea at all. So, you know, don't talk to me about dollhouses, but I just thought if I could just put up a green screen, have the children play at the recital, and then we could put them into the house of their choice, send that video off to their grandparents who couldn't make it to their recital, and, and it'd be kind of charming that they would be inside of a dollhouse playing their love that. Is, so is that happening or that's a dream project? That's a dream project. Oh, we have to make that happen. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you have 20 plus houses and now you also have many on the way that you're working on. Is that yes. right? Yes, I've, I've got three underway, you know, in various stages of completion. I, I think miniaturists are like that, that we have that. So talk a little bit about the John Deere, the John Deere house, because I think that's going to be awesome. Oh, yes. Well, I, 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 my, one of my little pups got sick and took him to the vet. And uh, I noticed that the veterinarian had this this collection of odd John Deere things, like figurines and cows or whatever, you know, farm Wait, things. Tell people what John Deere is in case they don't know. I mean, I barely know. I'm in the Northeast. We don't have farms. <laughs> John Deere is a... I think John like Deere a, was a tractor company. Tractor company, thank you. Yeah. Right, and I, I think it, it it is on the lines of, you know, like there are Chevy lovers and there are Ford lovers and there yeah. are John Deere lovers. And, um, and John Deere made a great big marketing campaign. They have, like the Holly Hobby, they have fabric, they have books, they have belt buckles, they have hats, they have belts. Yeah. There's all sorts of things that you can buy that have the John Deere label on them. And I know there's a lot of collectors out there. So I thought, hmm, I always start with the roof idea because I feel the roof is what yes. leads people over to the house, like gets folks to say, what is that? It's a dollhouse, but what is it? So I've collected now um, dozens of belt buckles. So this roof is going to be made of John Deere belt buckles. And of course, I've been scouting about for just the right furniture and, and, uh, and fabrics for the inside that mostly John Deere is green and yellow. That's, That's the color. Yeah. 
but lately over the over the past 10 years i think they have started to go with um, a more feminine pink with green and yellow but <laughs> pink is in there too is that so, right they're bringing pink or feminine colors in they are yes that is going to be awesome. We're going to be tracking you and tracking that project because we can't wait to see it. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention what is behind or didn't ask you about what's behind you. We oh, talked yes. about roofs and the importance of roofs and capturing the attention. Tell <laughs> us about that piece behind you with the keyboard. Great. This is the Durocraft St. Anne, and I decided to put um, piano keys on it. And it is also made with an entire uh, organ book of box uh, pieces. So this is only Bach, and it's called the Box Red Box because it's a red box. And um, this, this was so much fun. These materials come in. I don't know if I can cut them. I don't know how to do it, but you learn how. You yeah. start fooling around with it, seeing if you can cut them. And I, I think it turned out great. <laughs> Too bad it doesn't play though, right? It would be great if- That would be great. Well, it's <laughs> awesome as is all of your pieces. And I'm just, Thank it's you. just, it's so amazing. Let, let's see if we have any other questions um, in the q and I know I have a question. What, so what are your favorite tools to use? Oh, well, I, I have some war wounds from uh, the standard uh, a wood saw, you know, the, the kind that you get at Michael's. And uh, I'm very, I'm very proud of my, my wounds, my dollhousing wounds. And my husband has gotten some, some dollhousing wounds too. So it's, it's usually just a saw and glue and yeah. And you know, paper, paper. I've been using more paper now than I did in the past. In the in the past, it was more I had to use hard materials like tin and things. But now I think I like paper a lot. It's a lot and lighter. Where do you find your papers from? And what would be your all-time favorite material to use? I mean, that's a hard question because you use oh, so many different you materials. Know, I know we we talked a little bit about Studio Fifty Four, and you know earlier, but I like foils. Well, I like foils because it, it has that reflective yeah. you know, power. So when you, you're looking into the house, um, you're able to get a little bit of light back out, out of it. So I've, I've been doing foils. All right, cool. Let me, um, before, we, before we wrap up, let's just make sure there are no other questions. So Thank you, Darren. I don't see any other questions, but... Um, uh, yeah, I mean, this, you know, I just want to thank you because this has been incredible and hearing it come from you about these houses, like I saw your work, but to hear you talk about it is just going to the next level. So I want to thank you so much for being here today on Meet the Miniaturist and telling us your story and sharing these houses. And I can't wait to see what else is next. And I hope you're going to tell us, oh, we have to actually tell people how they can follow you. You have a Facebook page. I do. I do. It's Mosaic Dollhouse. Mosaic Dollhouse. So we can yes, follow yes. your journey there. We can learn about where you're going to be showing next because that's yes. going to be awesome. And we'll also see developments of your new work, correct? That's correct. And very, I'm just building very... just building a website and it's, it's mosaicdollhouse.com. So perfect. people can get in touch with me that way. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Before we let everyone go, I also want to just make sure people know that we have another next Meet the Miniatures coming up in a couple of weeks. Her name is Lisa Stones Peck. She's out of the UK and she's going to talk about, and she owns Spellbound Miniatures and um, she's going to come in and talk about um, the cricket machine that makes miniatures. It's crazy. There's 3D technology, there's, uh, there's um, uh, laser technologies, and now there's this whole thing called, you know, cricket. So <laughs> Stay tuned. If you are uh, not following me on social media, you can sign up for my email blast on dthomasfineminiatures.com. Um, so we'll be back in a few weeks for a next uh, for a new Meet the Miniaturist. And once again, thank you so much, Sheila, for being with us today. Thank you, everybody out there for being with us today. And continue to ask questions in the chat box. We'll be monitoring them even after this. Uh, we're on Facebook Live right now, so you could ask questions there. So yeah, everybody have a great day. And thank you so much for being here today. And we will see you all next week. Yay. Bye, Dan.